Hey guys, my name is Pansy and welcome to my BDO grinding guide. In this video, we're going over where you should grind at your AP for money. Before we get started, please do like, comment and subscribe if you find this video helpful. The best way to support me is to share it with your friends and on Discord. Now before we get started, please note the amount of money you make is going to be dependent on your gear, what class you play, what kind of buffs you grind with, etc. So there are a lot of various factors. I might say one spot is good for you, but it might not be the best for your class, but it is for majority of the classes. So you need to pick and choose. We'll have a lot of variety here so you can decide which is best for you and which spot you enjoy grinding in. For example, I have a lot of fun grinding stars and for me, it's very chill. Other people, it might be a bit too much or it might be a bit boring, whatever. You got to pick the right spot for you. Anyway, let's get started with the grind spots. The first spot I'd recommend is Helms. The reason being, this spot can be started at as low as 80 AP. I recommend you get here at around level 56 after you've awakened. The new skills from awakening would definitely increase your damage output over here. You can do just the mob rotations or the elite rotations inside here. So there's a lot of variety here in terms of the type of rotations you have. But I wouldn't recommend starting here until you're at least 80 AP. You can get there by doing the main story quest line and getting a lot of freebies there. Some of the notable drops here at Helms are going to be the Heaves Helmet, Scarlet Necklace, Ancient Guardian Seal, and the Forbidden Books. On NA, the Scarlet Necklace goes for around 4 mil and the Guardian Seal goes for around 10 mil. So they're definitely worth it. And the Heaves Helmet and Forbidden Books have a high drop rate from the Elite Mob, so that's pretty good. At around 160 AP, you can start doing stone organs. The notable thing about this spot is that you don't have to do a full rotation of mobs like in normal spots. Here, you'll be running between two to three elite mobs and fighting them. As you're fighting them, they constantly spawn smaller mobs, so you're never running around in huge rotations. So it's actually pretty pleasant. Only thing is that elite mob just keeps going underground and disappearing, but otherwise it's a pretty decent spot. In terms of money, it's pretty RNG dependent because you need a lot of luck to get a lot of Seraphs and stuff. I think my best hour was about 60 mil, but it's not that great. At the same time, at that AP range, it's not too bad either. I heard a lot of people say in Seasonal this was pretty fun, but I never tried it out in Seasonal, but you can keep it in mind. Anyway, Stone War against 160 AP, I think that's a pretty decent spot to be. Alright, next spot is the Gahaz Bandits. You can kill the Gahaz Bandits with around 150 AP pretty easily, but if you want to effectively make money here, you'd want to be able to kill the elites. For that, you need around 175 AP because she can be a bit tanky. Um, some of the notable drops here are the Seraph Necklace, the Black Spirit Claw. Scrolls written in ancient language drop pretty often. So otherwise, uh, if you're just doing the bandits, it's not really worth it in my opinion. But if you can do the elite, this is a pretty decent spot for the AP. Next up is the Poly Forest. So this spot is a very spun grinding spot. I'd recommend around 170 AP. You don't want at least 250 DP to feel comfortable here. In terms of money, it's um, pretty decent. Nothing too spectacular, but most of your money is going to be coming through Trash Loot, uh, Ancient Spirit Dust, Kafir Stones. Otherwise, it's, uh, it's a pretty decent spot if you want to make money as well as level up if you want to get skill points. In terms of skill points, it's one of the best places in the game, but otherwise, um, I wouldn't come here purely for cash. I think there are other places better for cash. But if you're looking for a chill grind with good rotations, plentiful mobs, I think this is a great spot. Next up is Prodi Cave. This is located directly north of Velia on this island called Weta Island. Um, it's a decent spot for money. In order to get here, you can get here by sailing on a raft, sailboat, fishing boat, whatever you got. Come over to the island and you can make your way to Prodi Cave. In terms of the notable drops, you'll find red shards here, which also drop in Underwater Ruin Sakraya. Um, those are used for making Tungrad rings and are worth over 100 mil each. There's also um, some notable things like Abyssal Essence, which are used for making Frenzy Draft, and that's actually pretty decent profit making those. Uh, you'll get a lot of Ancient Spirit Dust, Trash Loot, etc. Uh, some of the items for making the uh, key to get into Underwater Sakraya as well. Otherwise, um, this is a pretty average spot in terms of money um, because of the low AP range, but when you're a 170 AP player, I think it's a pretty fun area to go. Moving on to the next spots, you'll obviously make more money, but for that level range, I think it's pretty good. Next up is the Blood Wolf Settlement. I recommend coming here at around 190 AP. You can start here much sooner at around 175 or so, but there are elites here, so you'd want to have as much AP as you can get. 
in order to kill those um, pretty efficiently. Do note this is a rotation where potion piece drops for the infinite HP potion. So it's very likely a 600 gear score chad will roll up and slap you and take your spot. Otherwise, it's a pretty good spot for making money. Uh, there's a couple of events which proc here which give you a decent chance for loot. Akuma armor drops here, the Eye of the Rune Ring, Hoom's Crystal, a Gervish Crystal, a lot of Kafras and Ancient Spirit Dust. So it's a really good spot for making money. Uh, you just have to keep in mind that it can be contested. At around 190 AP, you can do the Basilisks. Um, this is an okay spot. It's nothing spectacular. I did it for a while. Honestly, I'd say it's not as good as some of the other spots, but you know, I had low weight at the time, so it actually worked out pretty well. The Basilisk belt drop rate isn't too spectacular, so it felt like a waste to use loot scrolls. If you're grinding with a loot scroll, I'd recommend something else, but 190 AP Basilisk, not bad. Centaurs is also something you can do around 190 AP pretty easily. The thing about centaurs is the layout of the mobs. It's a lot more spread out than other areas. So a class with high mobility actually does pretty well here. The notable things here are going to be the centaurs belt and black magic crystals. So this is one of the few spots which actually dropped the black magic crystal precision for your weapon. Uh, that's used for making Elkar crystals. So they're really valuable, always have pre-orders on them and definitely worth uh, grinding here for those. In terms of money per hour, it's also pretty average, uh, not bad. So it's an option, uh, really honestly depends on your class and if you're comfortable grinding here with the layout. Next up is the Pilaku Jail. I recommend at least 210 AP before you start grinding here. This is a pretty good spot. It's uh, consistent money because the accessory which drops here isn't that great. It's the Cecil's necklace, only goes for like five mil on NA. Most of your money is gonna come from trash, the scrolls written in ancient language, the Black Spirit Claws, Kafras, etc. So it's pretty stable. And also you can get the um, archeologist map piece here as well. So definitely a decent spot to grind around 210 AP. Sulfur Mines is a good spot to grind as well. In terms of drops, it's gonna be quite similar to Pilaku Jail. Most of your money is gonna come through the trash, the scrolls written in ancient language, Kafras, etc. It's a pretty decent spot. And also you get the other portion of the archeologist map. So. Definitely keep it into consideration. The most uh, valuable thing that drops here otherwise is going to be the Black Spirit Claw. At around 228p, I'd say you can do Forest Ronneros pretty well. Uh, this is around the Forest Ronneros area, Tooth Fairy Cabin area. It's a pretty good grind spot. Money-wise, I was making almost 90 to 100 mil an hour with the loot scroll, so it's pretty good. Some of the notable drops here are definitely going to be the Kafras because they're at a much higher rate than some other spots. Um, Ancient Spirit Dust, uh, Forest Breath, Forest Fury, the Ronneros Ring, which uh, kind of sucks in terms of price, but hey, it's something. Anyway, the potion piece also drops here, so be prepared for competition, especially on Arsha. The PvP here is lit, but in terms of the normal servers, it's pretty tame. I, I didn't have too much issue here. But yeah, it's a pretty good spot. The mob rotations are quite plentiful. There's like multiple, maybe three to four big rotations and a few smaller rotations as well. So it's a pretty good spot. Next up at 220 to 230 AP, I recommend you can do Monchon Forest. One of the notable things about this area is there's a lot of elevation involved. There's a lot of debris in the way, fences and all that stuff. So to be effective here, you need a class with good mobility. Otherwise it gets really tedious and annoying to grind here. But some of the notable things are the trash loot here are actually quite valuable, uh, a lot more than other spots. This is going to be one of the starting areas where here on out, you're going to get a lot more valuable trash loot. Anyway, the other notable drops are going to be the Narc Earrings, the Forest Furies, Forest Bread, Kafras, Ancient Spirit Dust, all that good stuff. Also the Narc's Crimson Tear drops from the Monchom Shamans for the Infinite Mana Potion. Now we're going to get to the end game portion of this guide. So here on out, the mobs aren't going to be one shotable or easy to slap around like the previous area. So now on, you're going to have to actually do a full rotation of your class and actually experience your class in its entirety, because I think this is when the game started being fun for me, when I was able to stand there, group up the mobs and do a full rotation and watch my full damage go out. So. Start enjoying it because you're going to be spending hundreds of hours in this stage of the game. So anyway, let's get started. 235 AP, I'd recommend starting off in Aukman. You have to decide between Aukman and Histria at this AP range because it's going to be the same AP requirement. However, the layout is completely different. So 
Some classes do really well in Aquan, some classes do really well in Histria. For example, as a Mystic, I did much better in Histria, whereas an Archer would do really good in Aquan. Some of the notable drops here are going to be like the Tungrad Earring, the black and red shards to make the Tungrad Earring, and a lot of uh, black magic crystals, as well as scrolls written in ancient language, and of course the trash loot is pretty good. Next up at 235 is also Histria, as I mentioned earlier. Now, some of the notable drops here at Histria is going to be the Tungrad Necklace, the black and red shards, a lot of black magic crystals, and of course one of the compass piece is going to drop here which has a lot lower drop rate than the others so people tend to grind here for a very long time to get that it can be crowded because of that so be prepared but this is a really good spot to make money now this one is going to be a bit controversial in what i'm going to say i recommend starting kratuga at around 235 to 240 ap some people say nah you gotta wait until 260 but hey I think you can do it much sooner. I did it. There's a, even a full-fledged guide I have out for how to do Kratuga at around 235 AP. Um, I go through the entire rotation. Check it out. I'll have it in the link down below. But yeah, Kratuga is a great moneymaker. It's inside the Hazra Ancient Ruins. Um, in my guide, I explain how to get in there, etc. But this is one of the spots which really defined the endgame for me. After I started grinding here, my gain started coming in a lot quicker. You make good money here because the drops are quite plentiful in the sense that there's three main items that uh, make you good money. One, the Tungrad Earrings, the Layton's Power and a Stone Necklace, um, Elkars. Elkars have a very rare drop rate, but if you make the crystal, they can sell for over 300 mil. Otherwise, this is just such a good place to grind. Um, the only downside is they clap. Uh, they can CC you, they can knock you down, and just smash you. I've died plenty of times early on, so... When you grind here, go in with a simple cron meal, beast draft, and well tendon elixirs on your hotbar, ready to hit them. You need to either V out or use those when you get knocked down because they can do a lot of damage early on. But later down the road, once you're more geared, it becomes a super chill grind spot in my opinion. Next up at around 250 AP, you can start doing Thornwood Forest. This came out with Odalita, and one of the thing about this area is they CC a lot. So my recommendation is actually socketing CC resistance in your uh, chest piece, even your shoes if you're willing to, but changing up your gem to get more resistance really helps out and makes this area a lot better. Classes which have a lot of super armors, for example a guardian, uh, will do really well here because the CC is the only downside in my opinion. The notable drops here are actually pretty good. Um, the ominous ring is uh, pretty valuable, however the drop rate felt like it was lower than a distortion earring in Star's End, but the trash loot is pretty consistent. You get a lot of trash loot here, uh, you can get Kafra's Ancient Spirit Dust, all that stuff as well, so it's a pretty good spot to grind. At 245 plus I recommend Star's End. Uh, this starts getting efficient and a lot of money per hour at 269 Kudum, but you can start it with the lowest of 245 in my opinion before uh, it starts being too much of a hassle. So, Star's End is a really good spot for obviously the RNG drop of the Distortion Earring. However, you can also get a lot of money from the Trash Loot, the BMCs, the Ancient Spirit Dust. The most common thing you'll hear in Star's End is Jill for Spot, which uh, gets really annoying. So, you're going to be really hard pressed to defend your spot and you got to be prepared for it. This is one of those spots that gets very contested whenever there's a drop rate event, but it's definitely worth grinding here. I love it. As a striker, I absolutely destroy the mobs here and it is a lot of money. So this will scale all the way till the end game. You'll just keep making more and more money because um, every time you're getting to a point where you're over clearing your rotation, you could always get a better rotation. There's like the main rotation, the cliff rotation, the temple rotation. So there's a lot of variety here. Next up at 269 AP Kudum and 329 DP, you can start doing Sakraya underwater pretty well. Some of the notable drops here are going to be the Tungrad Ring, the Red Shard for the Tungrad Ring, and the BMCs, Kafra's Ancient Spirit Dust, and of course the Trash Loot here. So the Trash Loot here is worth more than that of Star's End, and you make more of your money from Trash Loot here than at Star's End. So if you want consistency, Sakraya, if you want more RNG based, um, money per hour you can go to star zen either way both are really good high-end spots however sakraya you don't really start here very early unless you're a shy but anyway 269k kudum 329 dp sakraya great spot and finally we're at the ash forest you need like a billion ap to grind here well anyway 
Technically it's around 300 AP recommended here, but I think you can do it with like 285, but you need a lot of DP to grind here well. So 269 at least I think, or 350 if you're a DR build, something like that. I can't really preach on this one because I'm not there yet, so I don't wanna get too much into the details. However, notable drops here are the BIS necklace, the Deborica necklace, as well as the Lung and the uh, Leaf for the uh, Law or Zeka costume. And finally, the merchant ring piece. So yeah, that's about it, guys. And that pretty much concludes our solo grind spots here. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. I hope you find it helpful. Please let me know in the comment section down below what you think. And if you have any questions, you can drop by in my Discord or my stream. I stream every Monday, Wednesday, Friday on YouTube, as well as twitch.tv slash Pansy. So please do like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you know when I go live or drop a new video. Anyway, that's it for this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.